Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Sorry, I can't come to the phone right now, but leave me a message. You're listening to AMS Unfiltered. Hello, hello. We are live with season 2.5 of AMS Unfiltered, video podcast edition. Oh my God, I can't even believe this is real life right now. I bet you guys thought I probably like died or fell off the face of the earth because I literally have not been recording a podcast episode and I don't even know how long. Like I actually don't even know how long it's been. Let me look. Let's look on Spotify and see how long it's been. I'm so embarrassed. One thing about me is I'm going to always keep it real. And sometimes you fall off the face of the earth and don't talk to anyone for a while. (laughs) February 11th was the last time I uploaded for my podcast. And today it is July 18th. That is crazy. Let me get out of this so I can get some light in this direction. I'm currently chilling in the office. If you guys have never seen my office before, well, now you have. This is what my setup is going to be when I record the podcast. And then if I ever have guests, they're going to sit on the couch that is facing me over here. I wanted to at least get one episode up. So that is why I'm doing a solo episode right now. I can't wait to have some guests on here, though, and just like hang out with you guys and chill. It's going to be so fun. But this is the first episode. I am about to crack open a little beverage. I have open, I have a simply spiked strawberry peach drink here. It's like a seltzer. And I have a little wine glass and I'm just going to pour it up real quick. Let's do it. Maybe a little ASMR. Hell yeah. All right, let's see if I can do this. (laughs) I'm literally balancing the glass with the microphone. Oh no. I definitely spilled a little on the microphone. Please hold while I clean up my mess. All right, you guys, grab your coffee, tea, wine, seltzer, whatever it is, your drink of bev, (laughs) your drink of beverage, your beverage of choice, whatever that may be. And cheers to a new season of my podcast. If you have been one of the patient, patient listeners who has literally still been streaming my podcast every single week, thank you. I love you. Like I owe you my life. Thank you for being a ride or die. Thank you for still listening. Even when I drop off the face of the earth, this one's for you. Oh, that is so freaking good. But what is up, you guys? I am so excited to be sitting here with you today and recording an episode of Amazon Unfiltered. Basically for today, I have my little notebook here with all kinds of ideas of things to talk about. And I figured we could just catch up with what's been going on in life lately and just like talk about where I've been and what I've been up to and stuff like that and just like kind of what made me like start distancing from social media I don't even know where to begin (laughs) this feels like when you catch up with one of your friends who you haven't talked to in so long who you're so close with and you've had so much history with but it's just been a minute and you're like where do we even begin like a lifetime of things has happened since the last time we spoke so I genuinely don't know how to begin but basically I'll kind of just I guess start by talking about why I originally stopped posting and like why I kind of got distant from social media and it honestly it all like dwindles down to the fact that sometimes I feel like we are in such a crazy world and so much is going on and there's so much that deserves attention and so much that deserves to be talked about but I feel like they don't always get their limelight that they deserve or their spotlight that they're that they deserve and so sometimes I just feel silly or I don't know the right word, but sometimes I just feel not right coming on here and like showing you guys my life and me going to Starbucks and me like spending all this stupid money on stupid stuff that doesn't matter and like doing things that don't matter. But at the end of the day, I have to remember that for some people, my YouTube channel is an escape for them or like my podcast or whatever it is that I'm putting out, like my creative social media channels for them are an escape just like how Ariana Grande music is an escape for me and like going to anything Ariana related is an escape for me and so I just kind of have to remember that and it's crazy because I was talking with one of my viewers her name is Ella shout out to Ella um, a few weeks back and I was kind of venting to her about it just because you know she's been a subscriber for so long I used to post so consistently for a long time on YouTube and so naturally a lot of my followers are like where have you been what are you doing like are you going to come back are you going to post and so I kind of was opening up to her 
just about how I feel and about how I'm like, I just feel so weird posting online when we're in such a fucked up world. And like, there's so much that deserves attention and to be talked about. But like, I just feel so dumb. And so like, I don't even I can't think of the word just like, I just feel like it's ignorant to just be like, acting as if we're as if I'm in like this perfect world. But the way she put it is she's like, you have to remember that you're an escape for a lot of people like you're your YouTube channel is an escape for me. And when I want to be positive or be happy for a little while, I go and watch one of your videos. And it made me think that's literally why I started posting on YouTube. Because for me, and during my childhood or during just like rough years of my life, any point of my life where things were difficult or things were not fun, not great, I would turn to YouTube and I would watch my favorite YouTubers and I would just like, I would just dive into that fully like head first and I would just, I don't know, I just lived off of YouTube and as social media has grown, now there's TikTok. So obviously like a lot of the younger people kind of are growing up with TikTok, which for me it was YouTube. I guess I'm just kind of trying to get back to a place where I look at my YouTube channel as an escape you know what I mean like making the videos there is a fruit fly down here also I apologize (laughs) there's a fruit fly living in my office and it's pissing me off and there's one in my wine awesome there's actually one in my wine that's disgusting ew I got it out it wasn't like it wasn't in the wine it was just on the glass like but that was gross I just don't want you to think I'm nasty if you see a fruit fly flying around so I basically just have to get back to that mindset of creating content for a greater purpose like I'm doing this so that someone can come home from a long day of work and just turn on this podcast and hear me talk about other stuff so they don't have to think about their problems because that's why I started this all that is what brings us here today we are escaping our life's problems sitting here in my office just chatting like we're on FaceTime or like we're on the phone with that being said shout out to Ella thank you for just thank you for that thank you for that talk that day that meant so much um I don't really know what else to dive into I guess I could dive into like just like my new routines and what I've been up to. I don't know. I just, I feel like so much has changed in a year or even like a couple of years. I was just going through footage today of vlogs from last year because I was trying to clear off this memory card that I'm recording this podcast on. And I just came across like a ton of footage from last summer. And it's just so insane to me how times have changed. And like, I don't know. For example, I just got back from my one year anniversary trip with Devin and I can't even believe we've been together for a year. It's crazy to me. I just think about how much has changed from last summer when like we were starting to date to now being together for a year and just all the things we've been through in a year. It's so crazy. I just I don't know. I can't even handle it. I stumbled upon this video on TikTok recently that made me kind of like, it's kind of honestly why I'm sitting here filming this right now. Basically, this person was saying, I think it was a podcast. I think it was a clip from somebody's podcast. And they were just saying how, you know, if you're ever struggling to find motivation in life, as we do sometimes, just think about it as, you know, in life, when your boss asks you to do something, you do it like it's your job. You have to listen to your boss. So you do it. When your friends ask you for help with something, you show up for them and you do it. Or if you're in school, a teacher asks you to do something, you do it. Like you do all these things for other people. But then when it comes to things for yourself, if you're like me and you're a procrastinator, you'll procrastinate these things and you'll put it off and put it off and put it off. But like if that were for your boss or for your friend or for your family, you probably wouldn't put it off. You'd be there. You'd show up. And so this whole video was just about the mindset of like showing up for yourself and being able to take your own word. And that's something that I struggle with so much. I have been a procrastinator since high school, since childhood, my every era of my life, I have been a procrastinator. Just to paint the picture for you, when I was in college, it was literally my last semester of college because I dropped out halfway through college. But my last semester that I was in school, I had a final for some sort of, I think it was one of my English classes. And it was a multiple page paper I don't remember how many pages but we were supposed to write an essay on a very controversial topic and me being a procrastinator like I knew that that was coming obviously the semester was wrapping up like I knew that was coming however I forgot which day my final was on which is something you should really be prepared for like you shouldn't even be waiting for the night before to write an essay but that's just how I functioned that's how I got through high school that's just that's just how I am. I'm sorry. Like I'm, I still have not changed even though I'm trying. And so I was on Twitter and I was just like messing around on Twitter. I don't know what I was doing. And I saw one of my classmates, her name was Jenna. I don't know if she'd ever be listening to this, but 
I saw one of my classmates posting about her essay that she was doing and it was due tomorrow. And I was like, tomorrow, what do you mean? Like you're in my class. What do you mean it's due tomorrow? I have not even started it. I have not even picked a freaking controversial subject. Like I don't even know what to do this on. And so naturally I went and like looked through my syllabus or whatever my schedule and saw that sure as hell my exam was due tomorrow at 8 a.m. Like you had to I had class at 8 a.m. tomorrow. And so I had to rush to do this paper and I picked the topic of abortion, which it like almost can't get more controversial than that, especially at that period of time. Um, Because I think this was in like 2016. That was quite crazy. That was honestly like just to set the picture for you. I am such a procrastinator that I almost thrive on having a fire lit under my ass and like needing for it to be done. And it's just how I've always been. It's how I always will be. It's unfortunate. I'm trying to break the habit. But that whole video on mindset just got me thinking. And I was like, you know what? I need to show up for myself. Like I need to, I need to be there for myself. I'm so loyal to my friends, or at least I try to be. Like obviously I'm not perfect, but I try to be there and I try to be loyal to my friends and I try to show up when they need me. Why can't I be like that for myself? It's just, it's kind of tricky, you know? But we're working on it. We're working on it. That's why today I made it a point that I wanted to sit down and film this. I cleaned the whole office. I have candles burning. I just, I don't know. It feels so good. It feels so good to be talking to you guys. Like, I've missed you so much. I've been kind of going back and watching some of my old YouTube videos just because I've been curious, like, what was I up to a year ago or two years ago or whatever. And it's just been kind of funny. And, like, part of me also sees that I'm experiencing such beautiful things in my life right now. Like, I'm just so happy and it's to the point where I'm like, I miss when I would record everything because then it's captured for me to watch forever. Like all of my best, most happiest moments of life have been on camera and it's there for me to watch back. It's there for my friends to watch back. There will be times where I'll want to tell Devin a story and I'll be like, oh my God, wait, I have a YouTube video of it. Like, let me just play the vlog and we'll watch it. And like, you can see, it almost feels like I'm just like letting him in my brain and like showing him all these things that have happened in my past. Like I have a whole portfolio of my life to show people, which I think is pretty cool. And connecting with people all over the world watching is what's even cooler to me. But yeah, I just got some random motivation lately. I just, I don't know. I honestly, I think what it is, is probably about a month ago now. I can't exactly remember which date off the top of my head, but I ended up finding out that one of my best friends from high school had passed away. And his name is Arthur. Rest in peace, Arthur. His death really lit a fire under my ass to not let too much time go in between reaching out to the people that I love and care about. And it also just made me want to be more present in my life. So I don't know. I just, I didn't want to let any more time go away without pursuing my dreams. Like I love what I do online and I love connecting with people. I love recording stuff. I just, I'm like, why not? Literally, why not? Like the only thing standing in my way is myself. So here we are. We're not procrastinating anymore, guys. I did want to touch on part of the reason also why I haven't been so, so active online is because I'm like, so scared about privacy stuff because one of my biggest fears is like having a stalker because just I get creepy comments okay my friends know my boyfriend knows my family knows I get creepy comments about people trying to guess where I live trying to guess where I'm going like my frequent places the location of Starbucks that I go to like I get some weird ass comments and messages and so I I always will reach an internal conflict where I'm like, do I really want to keep going? Like, how much do I really want to share? And then I think of all the people who could be watching. Like, I think about my booze, like the ones that have been here since day one, the people who I literally know off the top of my head by name, who I chat with in my DMs, who I've watched grow up. Like, there are you guys, and then there are just creepy people who are watching for the wrong reasons. But, like, at the end of the day, I can't control who watches It's just something that's out of my control. All I can control is just how safe I am with it. I just try to be careful with like what I'm telling online. And that's that's honestly the best you can do is just be careful. But we're in such a difficult time that I just almost feel like you can never be too careful. I don't know, dude. These fruit flies are pissing me off though. This is so gross. I hate fruit fly season. At work, the fruit flies are bad at home the fruit flies are bad like ew I can't even 
but yeah, so a privacy, the privacy thing has definitely been a huge part of why I've kind of like backed off. I'm sorry if you can hear my mom vacuuming. <laughs> she's definitely already vacuumed today and she's vacuuming again. But that's one thing about my mom is she's going to vacuum. If you are watching the video format though of this podcast, definitely leave me a comment and let me know what you think of the quality. This is obviously my first time. This one's going to be a test. So after this, it will improve regardless. Like if anything's wrong with the audio or the video after this episode, I obviously am going to fix it. So the next episode should be better. But let me know what you think. Also, let me know who you'd like to see on the podcast. I already have quite a few guests lined up. I have a couple of my friends who are influencers online and who like do this social media work that are going to come on my podcast. I'm very excited and honored to have them on here. And some of my friends are going to come on. Devin is going to come on again. I am very much looking forward to all that is going to be coming from this new season of my podcast. I'm just so grateful. I want to try to hit 20K on YouTube because right now I think we're at like 19,300 something. And I'm at 20K on TikTok, which is awesome. That's kind of been like stagnant for a while. But I'm kind of in this new era of just wanting to get back into social media and growing my social medias and networking, traveling. I'm about to be hopefully back in my traveling era, but not too crazy because I'm also trying to save up to move out at some point, whether it's, you know, with Devin or by myself first and then with Devin, like whatever, however it works out. But I don't know. I'm just really trying to make a better future for myself. Girl, when Ariana Grande goes back on tour, I'm going to need to be able to afford to go to that. So I need to save my money because Ticketmaster is absolutely unreal and they need to quit with that shit. Like, what are you doing, Ticketmaster? Why are you bullying us? <laughs> I don't understand. They better fix that shit by the time Miss Grande comes back because, girl... Also, I feel so bad for Ariana right now. Her name is all over the headlines, and I'm not even going to say why in this podcast just because <sighs> that's my girl. You already know. I love Ariana. I think she is just like one of the best people on this planet. I adore her. I think she is so talented. We, we already know. If you're here, you already know I'm obsessed with her, so I don't even need to explain it. I'm not going to go and spread any rumors. If anything comes out that's fact, then maybe I will speak on it, but I'm not going to talk about any rumors on here because leave Ariana alone. I feel so bad for her because sis is just trying to film her movie and be in peace. And as it is, the writer's strike is going on in Hollywood where these big Hollywood CEOs don't want to pay the writers, which the writers are behind some of these best, most amazing shows that you see and that you love. And if it weren't for the writers a lot of the show would not be possible. So I just, I don't know. I stand obviously with the people who are striking. Fuck the big CEOs that are hoarding all this money. It's just sick. So I just feel for her. I really do. I love her and I just, I feel for her so hard. Also, you guys, happy Christmas in July. Oh my God. I am so sad. Like part of me is so sad because I have done Christmas in July on my YouTube channel for the past three years two three years and this year I haven't done anything Christmas in July related my main focus was that I was going to make this the Christmas in July present the video podcast I can't even believe I haven't even like addressed it yet but yeah for the past couple of years I've been doing Christmas in July just because I don't know like I needed a little bit of happiness in the middle of the summer of 2020 just because 2020 was such a freaking terrible year that I kind of just needed something so I was like, you know what? Let me just decorate for Christmas in the middle of July. So I put up my Christmas tree, which the Christmas tree is actually down here with me. You can't see it. It's just off the camera frame. But my Christmas tree is kind of iconic. I'll insert a video. But it has all of my Ariana Grande perfumes and just like random stuff hanging on it. But yeah, I just did Christmas in July because I was like, why not? Like this year has been so weird. 2020 was such a weird year. I was like, why not just throw Christmas right in the middle of July? And my family ended up getting in on it. I made merch and sold merch and it was so fun. And then the next year I did it again. I decorated again and had a big pool party with my family on the 25th of July, which was like Christmas in July. <laughs> and it just became a fun thing. And honestly, I think I'm going to have a cookout this year too, or like some sort of just pool party with my family on Christmas in July. And maybe I'll vlog it 
or what I've been doing most of the time now is ever since I got a new phone, I've been recording a ton of short form content on my phone, like TikToks, Instagram, like that kind of content I've been more into. So my goal for the rest of the year is to definitely post more on like TikTok and stuff like that and try to grow my social media is on like the short form apps. But anyway, moving on to the next subject that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I kind of wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Devin and I's anniversary trip. Because as I mentioned, we just went away for our one year anniversary and it was so special. So let's dive into it. All right, the wine glass is empty. Now I'm going to drink my drink, even though I'm scared that fruit flies like went in here. I swear, if I suck up a fruit fly, I'm going to fucking freak out. For our one-year anniversary, Devin planned an entire trip for me. I can't even believe it. Like, when I'm telling you, I never imagined I would be here. Like, I dreamt of it in my wildest, in my most wildest dreams. I dreamt of having someone like Devin who would basically, like, not even in a bad way, but would literally kiss the ground I walk on. Like, Devin absolutely loves me unconditionally and literally would do anything for me and I would do the same for him like we I have never met someone that matches my energy to the absolute fullest extent I'm not even exaggerating in any capacity but he's amazing and so he planned this whole entire trip for me and we ended up going to North Carolina And for the longest time, he didn't even tell me the location. Like the whole thing was a surprise. Every last bit of the trip was a surprise. But as it got closer, he started telling me more and more stuff. So he told me that it was a road trip. Then as it got a little bit closer, he told me it was to North Carolina. And then when it got a little bit closer, he told me we were going to be going golfing. And so and then, of course, there were still some surprises that he left for when we actually got down there. But just a little bit of backstory, if you guys want, you should totally go listen to my episode with Devin. It's not a video podcast, unfortunately, but it's from season one, I believe, or it might have been season two. I think it was season two. Basically, in that episode, me and Devin just told you guys like our love story and how we met. And that I think we filmed around like five or six months together. And now we've been together over a year. So I'm very curious to see how our next episode will go. When we record our next episode, I think it's going to be so fun. (sighs) But yeah, I forget what my point was of all of this. Oh, the trip. So yeah, he planned the whole thing. We took a road trip down. And first of all, the road trip was so much fun. We left in the middle of the night. We left around midnight and drove all the way down. We got to North Carolina probably around like 4 p.m. I think we got there a little after 4 p.m. First of all, the road trip was so fun, like stopping at Sonic. Sonic is my favorite fast food place, I think. If I had to pick one, I think it would be Sonic. In fact, I'm thinking about going to Sonic after this and bringing my computer and editing this episode there. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Me and Devin listened to so many true crime podcasts. I was like sick to my stomach listening to some of them. I can't like... I can only do so much of that. Once we hit my limit, like after like three or four episodes in a row, I was like, okay, we need to listen to music for a little bit just because I don't know. I used to be able to listen to that kind of stuff and like watch anything scary, watch anything spooky, creepy, like whatever. I used to be able to like, I used to be so desensitized to it where nothing would scare me, nothing would bother me. But so much has happened in my like late teen slash adult life where I'm just I don't know. I get triggered so much and so easily from like scary horror stuff. Regardless, it was still fun. It was different for me. Like I don't usually listen to the true crime stuff. So it was very interesting for me. And to hear about some of like the famous cases that I had never heard about was really cool. So that was very fun. That made time fly by. Seeing the city lights while we were driving at night was so cool. Seeing just like I don't know. It was honestly, it was just so cool going on a road trip and just like seeing the land. (laughs) You know what I mean? Just like seeing things was cool in general. I don't know. You you really bond being in the car for like 14 hours. You really do. Like I said, we got there around 4 p.m. and we walked into our Airbnb and wouldn't you know, Devin had a bottle of champagne and balloons waiting for me. (laughs) Like I can't. What I'm telling you, you guys, if they wanted to, they will wait do not settle like do not settle for that fuck boy that you're crying over right now please I promise you (laughs) just wait like your love is coming your prince charming your princess is coming I promise they are coming that was just like I remember I walked in and I literally I think I cried because I was like that is so nice 
face. I love champagne. Champagne is literally the key to my heart. But even just like any little gesture like that, and not even that it's little, like he got a nice bottle of champagne and balloons and like he went out of his way to make sure that that was done contacting like the airbnb owner and like like he went above and beyond he did not that was just such a gesture that stuck with me and that meant so much to me and it it was just a moment on that trip that I'll truly never forget like that was the first moment like that was the first moment I walked into the place we were staying but it was so nice it was so relaxing like as soon as we got in we just relaxed for a while enjoyed the weather there it was so warm so nice and then we got ready and we went out to dinner together and if anyone listening is from North Carolina we went to Seven Lakes Golf Course and we were staying in like the Pinehurst area just to give you like a little bit of to set the scene for you in case you're from North Carolina or in case you know the area anything like that but we stayed um, in Pinehurst and we went golfing at the Seven Lakes Golf Course And it was so pretty. It was so beautiful. And if you guys did not know, I was referencing our episode together earlier because of the fact that in that we explained that Devin and I first ever started like becoming really close through golfing. And I mean, I've golfed since I was a young kid. My grandfather would take me with him to the golf course when I was a kid. And like he tried so hard to get me and my dad and my mom into golfing. And like, I was the only one who kind of really stuck with it. To be completely honest, it's only, it was ever only motivated by a guy. (laughs) Like I only ever have golfed when I was dating a guy that golfed pretty much. But anyway, so how it all started was I asked Devin if he could teach me how to golf so that I could go impress this guy that I was talking to. It ended up being that me and Devin just bonded so much through golfing Like you're spending all day together in the hot ass sun. Golfing is pretty tough at first. Most people will probably agree. And it's vulnerable because you look like a dumbass most of the time when you can't hit the ball or when you can't hit the ball straight or when you hit the ball in the woods or if you hit the ball like five feet in front of you. It's just golfing can be quite embarrassing. And I felt so comfortable with Devin. He taught me so much about it. And so that's kind of why on this anniversary trip, we ended up making it kind of like surrounded a around golf and we made sure that we were golfing a couple of times and especially just because like Devin obviously planned this trip for us it's for both of us but he obviously like he treated me like a princess he did everything I could have ever dreamed of or wanted and so naturally like we were going to do stuff for him too and so golfing is one of his favorite things in the whole world to do debatably up there with a few other things so it was just nice that like he got what he wanted I got what I wanted like we both that's just the that's just the thing about us like we're so good at balance and just like making sure that we're both getting what we need so yeah so we went golfing and it was so amazing we had a tea time at like 10 a.m and everyone in North Carolina is no idiot and they all golf very very early in the morning before it gets hot so when we went out at 10 a.m there was nobody on the golf course we were literally the only people until like later on in the day we finally had someone catch up that was like behind us but Regardless, we went almost the whole day alone. And then afterwards, we went back to the clubhouse and had lunch and drinks, which was included with a round of golf, which is so cool. I wish it was like that in Massachusetts, but it's really not there. I don't even think there are any golf courses that do that up here. Also, it was 100 degrees that day, too. So afterwards, when we were like having our drinks in the clubhouse, we were literally sticky. Like I remember I went to the bathroom and I had to peel my skirt off of me and peel it back on. Like it was just... It was hot. It was hot as fuck. But honestly, it was so much fun. Like, I I loved it so much. And so then after that, we went back. And I'm pretty sure we relaxed that night. And I think we had a night in. Because the other thing is, I finally watched The Office. Devin showed me The Office. And we binge watched it together. And we finished it on vacation. Like, we were almost done with it we only had like a couple of episodes left going into vacation so on that Friday night we decided to just stay in and binge watch the office and just like have some wine and just hang out so that's what we did and I just have to say I fucking sobbed (laughs) at the end of the office like it was so good I'm I'm depressed like now I'm depressed because I feel like a big chunk of my heart has been removed but it was so funny oh my god I love the office so much we'll we'll get into a whole other tangent about that I want to do an episode where I strictly talk about just like shows I've been watching and stuff like that so we'll get into all that eventually but we finished watching the office that night had a chill night in we went to bed kind of early that night too because we had a tea time the next day at 8 a.m 
for another golf course. And this is the golf course of the shirt that I'm wearing. Hold on. Let me get up. It's called The Cradle. And it was at the Pinehurst Golf Course, Golf Resort, whatever it's actually called, which is like one of the most iconic golf courses in the whole country, Pinehurst. So hair flip. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. No one cares. But it was honestly so iconic. I loved going there. It was beautiful. It literally felt straight out of a movie. I did not do that bad. I mean, I, I did okay. That was actually on the day of our one year anniversary on the 8th, July 8th. And so it just felt so cool that we were out at like a golf course that Devin's always wanted to go to on our anniversary, doing the thing that brought us close together as friends. And like, I don't know, it was just so cool. And so I guess like the, the premise of this conversation, like the whole point of this conversation is just to never settle. Cause like, I just, I would never have thought I would be here a year into a relationship and being so happy. Anyone who's been following me for a while or who knows me, in real life knows I literally never thought I would be here like ever and so I'm just so grateful so shout out to Devin if he's watching or listening so that was Saturday and then our last day on Sunday or actually wait let me finish Saturday we ended up going back home after golfing and then we got all cute and got in our nice little outfits and we went out to like a late lunch early dinner for our anniversary and we went to this bar called Chapman's and Basically, we were just like kind of having coffee, like chilling midday on Saturday at the place where we were staying and we were looking up restaurants that were in the area and we just wanted to pick like not like necessarily a fancy place. Like we didn't care, but we just wanted to go somewhere with good food, good vibes for our anniversary. And so I was also talking to my best friend Lulu at the time and she was like, you guys should go somewhere like a small business because they'll be able to tell you stories probably about people who have come there for their anniversaries and like who knows maybe they'll give you something for free I don't know and so when we looked up this place Chapman's it was like one of the first places that came up and one of their first reviews was a couple saying that they had went there for their anniversary and that it was amazing it was a hidden gem and so we were like all right like let's go so we walk in and it's this cool bar basically the whole bar countertop was made of like pennies it had just all pennies And it was really, really different, really, really cool. So we sat at the bar, which like we're more bar people. We like chilling at the bar, you know. I like sitting at a table every once in a while, but I just, I don't know. I like the bar. It's really fun. It's more my vibe. So we walked in here. And also a side note, I wasn't really eating seafood down there. I'm a big seafood person. But whenever I go down south or like out west, like somewhere where I'm in the middle of the country or not near water, I don't really get seafood just because... I'm fortunate. I'm I'm very lucky. I live up here in Massachusetts right off the water where we always have fresh seafood. But I just get scared about eating seafood that's like not straight off the water. I don't know. I, I'm just very I'm I have a sensitive stomach when it comes to seafood, so I don't risk it. And we get to this bar and, you know, we order some appetizers. We're having some drinks. We're having a good time. We're chatting with the bartenders. They're so nice. And I was asking them what they recommend. And the first thing that he says is the salmon like the salmon is so good if you love fish and I was like honestly I do I just haven't really been trying it down here because we're not really like near the water and he was like no I'm telling you I have our salmon almost every single day it's so good it's so fresh like it's the best in in the area like for miles and miles and I was like damn okay like I guess I'll have to give it a try so I got I'm pretty sure I got penne a la vodka or like some sort of like vodka sauce pasta with the salmon like blackened salmon on top Oh my God, it was so good. It was so freaking good. It was literally probably my favorite meal we had while I was down there. It was so good. And so, yeah, we just had the best time. The bartenders were amazing. They were so funny, just like going back and forth the whole time. Like, I don't know, the environment, the vibes, everything was just amazing. And then wrapping up this whole like story then we get to the end of the meal and you know they had asked like what we were doing in town and Devin was like yeah it's our anniversary you know I just wanted to come down here it's like the golf capital of the freaking country we wanted to come down here and so fast forward we're like you know I think we're all set we're gonna get the bill and they go no what do you want for dessert it's on us and I was like oh my god like that's just so sweet and it just made me laugh because I was like Lulu literally was saying earlier go somewhere small because they'll give you a free thing like I'm sure of it and so I don't know it was just so funny how it all worked out so we ended up getting a nice molten lava cake and it was fucking delicious <sighs> but yeah so that was our anniversary lunch and then we went back home changed super fast um, loaded up the car 
and headed to a drive-in movie, which was so cute. Like, I'm not even kidding you guys. This literally fell straight out of a Nicholas Sparks book. If you've ever read a Nicholas Sparks book, you already know they are usually taking place down in the South. Like a lot of his books have taken place in like North, South Carolina, Georgia, places like that. He is such an iconic, like Southern charm writer and always writes love stories, of course. But I literally felt like I was straight out of like one of those books. It was just the most special trip, like with the love of my life. Like it was just, and it felt so magical. We were in this cute little bungalow. That's what the thing we were staying in was called. It was called like a bungalow. It was so cute. So we went to this drive-in movie and we're just like all cozy in my car with snacks and also, this drive-in movie place was so nice. The amount of snacks and like different kinds of things they had at the concession stand was so cool. Part of me wanted to just move. <laughs> like the whole time, me and Devin kept being like, we'd live down here. Like for sure, we'd live down here. It obviously is challenging moving that far away from where you live. I don't know. There's pros and cons, but I would not be opposed to living down south. Yeah, so that kind of wraps it up. Then after the drive-in movie, we went home and... I want to have Devin on and tell you guys like all the stories from the trip because there's some stories that I'm not going to tell right now, but I just, I want to tell you guys so bad. But once Devin comes on the podcast, we will spill all of the tea that I did not spill from the anniversary trip. But then the next day, the last day, we went shopping in the morning. Well, first we like hung out around the, the house and just like packed up, got all our stuff ready. And then we went to the shops and did some shopping. We went to the pro shop, which is where I got this shirt. And I got a big oversized sweatshirt too, which I love. We just kind of chilled. Like we were just kind of like vibing, relaxing, just not really like rushing because we didn't have to be home at a certain time. We were just going to leave whenever we wanted. And wouldn't you know that as soon as we were leaving, like as soon as we were like, all right, like let's head home. We're all good here. It starts to downpour. So the weather was literally perfect until the moment we left and then it started raining which is good because at least like we got to enjoy our whole vacation, but it kind of sucked because the whole car ride home for like the first few hours was pouring rain. And then throughout going up the coast, it just was like on and off rain. So that was the only, only bad thing. But other than that, it was so much fun. Even the car ride home was so fun. And also Devin drove me the entire way. Like he drove me, he did not let me drive. He drove the entire way down, the entire way back. And it was just absolutely insane. But he was like, I want to drive you like such a gentleman. I guess just to kind of like wrap this up, because maybe I'll end this episode here again. Just don't settle. Like, please do just promise me, promise me as your big sister here. I know a lot of you guys are like telling me that I'm like a big sister to you. And for that, I'm so thankful. But as your big sister, please do not settle. And I don't even mean just in love life, just in relationships. But I mean that all across the board your job, your family, your love life, your friendships, just literally every last thing in life, just do not settle. The only thing really standing in your way is yourself. Everything in life is about outlook. If you don't understand why something's happening, it's probably a lesson for you. And it's probably something that's really important that you learn and that you go through. And it's very, very hard to hear that or accept that in the moment. I am the first person that will openly admit that. Whenever I'm going through it and I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, I have a very hard time accepting advice from people who are telling me it's going to get better. I am the first person that will be like, no, it won't. There's no hope. It's never going to get better. It'll get good for a little bit and then it'll get bad again. But I promise you, you cannot look at it like that. You have to look at the lesson in things and you have to, you have to get around it. Like the only way out is through. You have to go through things in order to come out the other side. And that's just how it is. I don't know. I just, I look back at everything that led me to this moment in time and there are so many things that I wished I did not have to go through and that I never understood why I had to go through it until now so just remember whatever you're going through it's temporary it's going to end even if it does not feel that way right now it will nothing lasts forever and that's fortunate and unfortunate all at the same time so take that with a grain of salt you know try to try to apply that to your situation like everything's different but not everything is forever whether you're in such a happy moment just remember it's not going to last forever unfortunately so hold on to it while you can enjoy it while you can and if you're in a bad moment right now also remember that that shit is not going to last forever and you're going to be fine you're going to come out on the other side in fact just before I started this whole episode Um, I was on the phone with Timmy and he had me write down something really important 
And he was like, you should talk on the podcast about how much you have learned to communicate. You know, not that I didn't ever know how to communicate with people. Like, I mean, I would if there was ever an issue, you know, I could maybe figure it out. But like, I feel like I have just made it such a goal of mine to learn how to communicate better. And when something's bothering me to say it instead of just like letting it fester inside or like for me, a lot of the times when I would be in a situation with someone where you know, maybe they said something that made me feel uncomfortable or they said something that offended me or they were like, I just feel like maybe in the past I was a little bit more passive and I wouldn't stand up for myself. But now I'm really, really, really making a conscious effort to stand up for myself, stand up for other people when people just aren't being treated properly or if I'm not being treated properly or I don't know, I'm just, I'm really making it an effort to communicate better. And I mean, I have to thank my boyfriend for that a lot. Like I owe him so much credit because He might not think so. He might not like agree with this right off the bat, but like he is so good at communicating and he has taught me so much about just like he's taught me how to find the words to describe how I feel because I feel like I just in the past I would feel a certain way, but I would have no idea how to put that into words and how to like articulate that to people. So I would just kind of just like let it go and be like, "Mm, well, whatever. But now I just feel like I'm improving so much of my relationships because I'm learning how to communicate and I'm learning how to tell people when I need something or if, you know, or or vice versa. Like if someone wants to tell me that they need a little bit more from me, now I'm more open to like taking that and like doing something about it. I don't know if that makes sense. I just feel like communication is so important and like if you can't learn how to communicate with people, it's going to affect you. And I don't just mean that as far as like romantic relationships. I mean that in the workplace or in your family or in your friendships or wherever it may be. It's just so important to learn how to communicate with people. And I just feel like in the past, like growing up, I didn't know how to communicate and I was a very angry person. And I would almost, I would only really communicate through like anger and I would never really communicate any other way I don't know I don't know if that makes sense but now it's to a point where I feel like I can use words to explain how I feel and that might just seem so small but like if you're someone like me who just did not know like if someone was like what's wrong like like why are you feeling this way it would be very difficult for me to actually find words to understand why I felt that way but now it's getting to a point where I'm not afraid to dig a little bit deeper bro there's literally three fruit flies around me right now what is going on all right you guys I think I'm gonna wrap up this episode here just because I'm honestly so anxious to like start editing this episode and seeing how it came out and uploading it for you guys to see please let me know what you guys think of the video format of the podcast like I said if anything is wrong you know behind the scenes wise like quality audio anything like that I promise you it will be resolved for the next one But thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you so much. Shout out to everyone who streams my podcast, even when I'm not uploading. I see you. Like, I get the notifications that you guys are listening. And I appreciate you so much. You don't even understand. And I'm just so excited to bring this back. And I'm so happy to be feeling happy and to be feeling motivated. And I just can't wait to chat with you guys every single week. And for you guys to meet my friends and meet my family. And to just have so many fun episodes and also just to get back to recording for YouTube and uploading more. Like I just, I want to evolve and I want to grow and I want to reach more people and connect with more people. And as I said in the beginning of this episode, I just want this to be a place where we can all come to escape. Like this can be our little getaway where we can go for even just like 20 minutes or I don't know how long this is, but like typically my YouTube vlogs are around like 20 to 30 minutes, just like 20 minutes of an escape where you can just listen to me talk about fucking random shit that honestly does not matter, but at least it's not you having to worry about your problems. I do apologize for my little fruit flies that have been irritating the fuck out of me and that have probably been flying in front of the lens. So I do apologize for that nasty little pest interruption but thank you guys so so much for listening and for watching shout out to you if you have made it this far make sure to tag me on my stories on instagram or honestly any social media 
for a chance for a follow or for a like or a spam, anything like that. I promise I will be waiting and watching. But yeah, that is it for this episode. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Ams Unfiltered Podcast. And make sure that you're following and liking this podcast anywhere that you stream podcasts. And yeah, welcome to season 2.5 video podcast edition. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>